like a lot of people. I don't get to hang out with a lot of people these days. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I don't think you're alone. But uh, yeah, that could kind of start where I want to talk about is as a musician, how the hell you've been dealing with everything? I mean, could, I can't believe that I'm still talking to people about it a year later. That's the thing that's driving me more crazy than the actual thing itself. Like the other day I was sitting down talking to someone. I'm like, holy crap, we're almost on a year. Like, this is insane. What are you doing to keep your sanity? Yeah. Well, and, you know, and I try not to dwell on it too much, but just, uh, you know, there is sort of the, the real sort of uh, the reality, you know, the outcome right. of possibly having this, you know, because people, friends of mine are asking like, oh, well, like, do you think, you know, you'll start playing shows sometime this year? And oh. my, I, I, that's my only answer. I I hope I, you know, it's, um, you know, playing like, like playing in the band America, like right. Jerry and Jerry and Dewey, they're, they're really smart dudes and they're really, you know, they're concerned for their, their fans as course, well. So yeah. they don't want to contribute to um, people getting sick. So um, in the meantime, I'm, I feel very lucky that uh, me and a couple other uh, partners, we have a studio called pot of gold recording. That's right. Yeah. And, um, and, and, we've been able to, and we're lucky enough that we, it's the studios big enough that we're able to have these ah, you know, awesome. socially distanced um, uh, uh, recording sessions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people will be pretty much in their own room, you know, cause there's glass and everything. Right, so, right, yeah. and also, but times, you know, but times if people have to be in the same room, you know, people are still really respectful, still wearing masks. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people are getting COVID tests before they even come really? like, the day before to come do their session. So that's good. Um, yeah, it's it's been able to uh, again, and even if I'm not working with artists, um, I've always been working on my own music and always right. recording, so I'm always keeping busy. Um, so that, that's the good news is I, that I sort of have a place to go to every day mm -hmm. and work and stay busy. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, I can um, I I can only imagine with you know maybe some people where it's you know if they've I mean. Technically, I, do, well, I mean, right. I did lose my job, sure, <laughs> but, yeah, but you know, it's, but I, I've, I guess because, you know, because it's music, I'm still able to, I guess, you know, work if you right. want to call it that, but I'm able to keep my mind busy, my brain busy. And, and, um, and I definitely have more time for like going on hikes and jogs and things like that. Which so is good. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to, you know, it's, uh, I think I've, I, I think I went through a long process over the last, mm -hmm. you know, or, uh, you know, a, a, there was a while where I was starting to feel guilty about, you know, just with so many people dying and so many people being sick, so many people losing jobs. I was, I was almost feeling guilty. Not, I wasn't, not that I was enjoying my time, but it was like, I, I felt this weird sort of like, how do I, Am I being you know, selfish? Like, what am, am I being I, selfish yeah. by going? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the most of this time right. since I'm not on the road. Like, I felt really weird about that, and you know, of course, I still feel heartbroken for everyone who, you know, families and friends sure. who have had yeah. loved ones die and getting sick and losing jobs. Um, but I think I just got to a point where the the only thing I can do is try and just focus on really just on you know day to day, right? Um, what am I going to do today to try and feel like I'm uh, um, still trying to contribute to sure. society in a positive way? Right. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, um, I, I think the, but that's been how I've been getting through. But also I think just, just, I think having this, never ending hope that you're, or just, just kind of just focusing on like, this is all, this will end. I know like what this, you mean. I'm a Cubs fan. End. So in 2016, that ended for us. So I know what you mean. It feels like going through this long drought, like, oh, it's going to, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. So it's like, I think we're all lying to ourselves at the same time. I'm starting to get freaked out. All these new stories about these new variants. I'm like, I can't do this. No more. Just stop it. Like yeah. Someone told me the other day, they go, what if this is just the start of a long decade? I go, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, no, like, well, you know, and, and the crate, you know, and the thing about that is I, 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 and I just don't think about that sort of stuff. I try you not know, to, but now it's hard to, cause I thought about it. I'm like, Oh no, like this is, yeah, I, I would, I, I'm going to, I'm, 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 I'm eternally hopeful. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm yeah. going to keep staying hopeful and keep trying to stay positive and, and, um, and, 
and you know just keep making music for now <laughs> it's it's hard though sometimes to kind of to 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 minimize the distractions and focus on what you can achieve in this time and moment because it's as soon as you turn on the tv you're overwhelmed and you're swarmed with negative energy from everywhere you look so it's like god just what can I do? And you're in a good position, like you said, with the studio. How long have you been involved there? Is this something that you kind of started or are you just helping out there? Talk so a little bit about the studio itself. Yeah. So a, a, a good friend of mine who I've also worked with and toured with, his name's David Irish. Oh, he's, okay. Yeah. He's, yeah. He works with a band called The Interrupters mm -hmm. um, and he's worked with the band Real Big Fish. But his his old... Uh, he used to have a studio and then um, he just, he wanted to go off on his own and start his own studio. And so he was the one that really stuck his neck out and got nice. all the business loans and everything. So he found um, just this empty warehouse and we built the studio from the ground up, you know, wow. put the studs in the ground built, you know, so it's like, it's, it's a custom studio that we built. Pre-COVID um, you built this? Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this was, so five years ago oh, okay. uh, we signed the lease and, and then it took about eight months to build the studio and get it sort of functioning. And then, um, and we've, so we've been there recording uh, bands and artists for about four years now. And then we oh, just, wow. we were, you know, we just, you know, we were really uh, happy when we got the new lease offer. Cause you know, they knew we were building the studio, but you know, you never know when someone's like, you know, right. we, we, we really want to get some different tenants in here. So we were very happy when they, came back with the you know inevitably you know the rent's always going to be higher but still sure. the fact that we had put all this time and energy into the studio um and, you know it's it's a you know we have this big old main tracking room and then we have three other smaller wow. tracking rooms That's so and, and two different and two different um and two different uh control rooms so it's a it's it's a it's a it's it's a full studio and um and it was recording was something I had always enjoyed doing, but mm -hmm. I'd never, uh, but it wasn't until I got involved with this studio that I really started learning the ins and outs of it. Right. Um, and it's, it's been a lot of fun because I, I love touring. I love playing, but eventually, you know, I think, you know, anyone who is slightly ambitious is going right. to just not necessarily want more, but just mm -hmm. want to expand it, just broaden your horizons. Sure. And, um, and I think that was, so being in the studio was something that was really interested me. And so the fact that I had access to a studio with wonderful equipment, because right. um, David's been, you know, he's been, you know, he's been slowly building up all his gear over the last, you know, 20 years. So I, I get to uh, reap the benefits of his investments because, and he's a cool enough guy where, you know, he'll, you know, when he's not having sessions, it's yeah, you go, you can That's use the nice, studio. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't have to, I didn't have to do the thing where it's like, okay, now I have to figure out how to purchase, you know, a hundred thousand right. dollars in gear. Right. Uh, That's great. Yeah. He actually did. Uh, he, didn't he do the Beyonce, the Lion King video? Was that him? That's Dave Rosser. This is Dave Rosser. Okay. Dave Rosser. Yeah. So he's, so he uh, and his partner. I knew uh, it was a Dave. I didn't know if it was that one. Yeah, but he but he comes but he works out of our studio a lot too. We come down, he comes down and we do drums. He you know, he's he's working out of there. But yeah, they 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 landed a track on the um the Beyonce Lion King record mm -hmm. and that and that uh song was just covered by uh James Blake. So they're oh, really geez. excited about that one. Yeah, they so he's 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 really got things going, but you know, and that's that's one of the great things about having this studio is is we're sort of able to create this sort of this, whatever you want to call it, a community, a collective right. yeah. where, where we're all, you know, it's when one of us benefit, you know, when one of us does something, you know, when, when one of us has a success, we all kind of get to have a success right. yeah. uh, with them because so we're all rooting for each other. I think when I was younger, um, you know, I used to get real bent out of shape when my friends were doing better than I was. Oh, I get like that sometimes. It's, well, it's a horrible thing. It's horrible. And, and eventually I just, I just sat there and thought, this is ridiculous. I should right. be happy for my friends. And, you know, because, you know, if you're truly friends with these people, like what's good for them is ultimately going to be good for you sure. as well. Um, but it's, um, but it's, it's great being able to sort of have this hub, mm -hmm. meaning the studio where everyone can, you know, people can work out of there and they can feel, you know, uh, 
you know, artistically, sure. you know, in a good, comfortable environment. They don't have to, you know, don't have to feel like the clock's ticking. Um, so it's really, it's a really great thing to be a part of. Absolutely. Now I know you play drums, obviously, but um, starting out, was that the soul, the sole focus when you got into music, or was drums something that came later? What, what piqued your interest first uh, as in a, as a musician? Well, my dad, my dad's a musician. Okay. Um, and so his main instrument is guitar and he could also play piano pretty well. So oh, there was a piano growing up in the house and some guitars, but whenever it, it just seemed, it was just too much for me at, in, at yeah. first. So, but one day I went over to a friend's house who had a drum kit and I just sat down and started banging on it. I couldn't like play. It wasn't like I just naturally could play, right. but I really enjoyed just cause there was no, you know, like you're sitting at a piano and you're okay. If you're not hitting the right notes, yeah, you just hit stuff. You just yeah. let it out. And, and so I think I had, I had, or I don't, I don't think I know. I had, I just, I had a lot of energy as a kid. So I think playing drums was a great way to sort of get that energy out. Safe um, way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was lucky enough to have not only two parents, but also, but I, I have an older brother and sister and a younger brother, but oh, wow. I was, I was, lucky enough to have a family that was very understanding with me banging on the drums three, four hours a day. I was going to say that um, has to be hard. Yeah. Yeah. And well, it was funny because when my younger brother started playing drums, I remember I came home one day and he was playing and I was like, that is so loud. And my sister goes, yeah. I was like, is that how loud it is when I play? She, sound, <laughs> and, yeah. and she goes, it's louder. I was like, what? what? Yeah. So I, it was at that moment that I realized I, I have a very cool family, you Not know, kidding. and very supportive family to, to, to put up with that amount of noise. Um, sure. But, and, but once I started playing, I, I couldn't, I couldn't put the sticks down. I just really loved it. And, and I, I think I, the, you know, the thing that I attribute you know, is any sort of like abil the ability that I'm at um, now as a drummer, mm -hmm. uh, I don't, uh, I don't necessarily attribute it to um, having this sort of really uh, disciplined practice regimen mm -hmm. or, okay, I have to practice this time a day for this right. long. I have to practice. It was really just, I really love playing drums. It was natural. It wasn't forced. At, yeah. And so it was, so really my, it was, it was just playing along to records, listening to music and, and kind of just, it was mainly learning by ear. I did end up taking some lessons um, and I probably couldn't read sheet music, uh, sheet drum music now. Yeah. I but don't even know how that works though for drums. Like, I don't know what you're reading. I, it's, I just it's figured just, it'd all be by ear. Yeah. And that's basically what it was. I, I, you know, when I played in the jazz band at school growing up, uh, like in high school, you know, I was lucky because the, the, uh, the teacher, he would give us like, before we'd start rehearsing a song, mm -hmm. um, he would give us the chart and he would make us like a cassette tape ah, of the version that we were doing. So, so I would just take it home. Right. And, and I think I almost, and I think he kind of knew like, all right, he, this guy can't read. So I'm just going to yeah. give him a tape. And so I would, but that's what I would do. I would go home and listen to the tape. But, you know, I think there was sort of a thing of, I would listen to the tape and kind of look at this sheet music that just looked like, you know, Latin, Greek yeah, or Latin like, to this me. This is that? How is yeah, that? Yeah, that is that. It's like, yeah. <clears throat> and it's sort of a, all right, if you say so. Yeah, right. Um, so I was, I guess we're, as drummers, we're, we're kind of lucky that you know, we don't necessarily have to worry about hitting a wrong chord or right. anything with the rest of the band. It's the worst, the worst that we could, you know, probably do is, you know, stop when the band's still playing or keep playing when the band stops. Sure. Um, uh, but yeah, it was a lot of, it was a lot of playing to records. My, my dad would make me these mixtapes of bands, um, a lot of classic rock bands like the Beatles and Led mm. Zeppelin and, um, and the band America and Rolling Stones. And that was kind of how I started playing. It wasn't really until I was in my mid or er, er, early twenties that I like kind of started learning how to be like a rock drummer or a, a, rock or a punk drummer or, you know, a ska drummer. Like I, I was, I was just thinking, you know, for me, you know, for me, it was just like, that's oh, the Beatles and the Stones. Like, right. You know, is, like, is there really anyone deal? else? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's crazy. 
Now, what was, uh, you mentioned the, you do have a, you said an older brother and a younger sibling too. So older. Yeah. And younger. I have what an older the, brother and sister that are twins oh, and, wow. and then a younger brother. What was the dynamic like with them? Were they, were all of them or was it just your, your, your brother, uh, the only other one in, in the family who is involved with music as far as siblings go? My old, my older brother, he went into, he's a military man. He went into the air force oh, okay. and he was, he's a career guy. And my sister went into uh, uh psychology. Oh, so then you're so, the long musician. Well, and, but my, and my little brother, he, he, he's a drummer as well. And he's actually had some pretty big gigs. Like he played with Demi Lovato for like three oh, years. Shit. Wow. Yeah. That's he's, great. yeah. And he's, and he's played with this, um, this solo artist. Um, her name's uh, Lindsay Sterling. Oh, and okay. She, yeah, she's a violinist. He's been with her since day one. I think Ed Sheeran did some stuff with her before. It may have been. Yeah, may yeah. have been. Yeah. They, does he, she have long? Does she have? Uh, does she have red hair? Yeah. Yeah. She okay, kind of. Yeah, she yeah. kind of looks like an anime character. Yes, exactly. I, I've seen her before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. My and my brother. He so he's had some big gigs himself, and that's awesome. Um, but you know, this year has been so crazy. Uh, you know, I've I've been able to like still keep the bills paid, mm -hmm. you know, doing, still doing like studio stuff, still doing music. My brother, he just decided, um, cause you know, he, cause that was his living as well, right, but of course at times were getting tough. And, and so randomly he just decided, I guess he was watching the, um, the new show Cobra Kai okay. on Netflix. And I guess the, the Danny LaRusso character owns some, um, I think some car dealerships. And I think my brother's yeah. like, I think I could sell cars. So he got a job selling cars. And it's working. <laughs> and he's doing it. He's sold yeah, and he's, yet? yeah. And he's like, dude, <laughs> I love it. It's great. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I it's work at Alexa. Nowhere. He's like, I work at Alexis dealership. I'm like, wow. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, but I still, but again, I guess I, I still feel, it, I feel very lucky. I feel very fortunate that I'm still able to, you know, uh, keep a, keep the roof over my head and food in my belly with music. So. Right, of course. Uh -huh. You know, it was funny that you were talking about your, your dad playing those records, uh, including that of America. Um, the fact that you are eventually transitioning into playing um, with them is quite impressive in itself. I mean, how, how old are you? I, uh, I turned 40 last year, just 40 last, last year. year. How yeah. did that opportunity present itself? I mean, obviously, I know you spent time or you're in another ska band. Uh, yeah, Real, Real Big, Big Fish. Fish. Yeah. Um, how did how did they find you was it just by way of them word of mouth or did you submit some sort of uh you know kind of audition to i mean what was how did that process come to be because i found that quite fascinating i couldn't even imagine listening to those records growing up and then transitioning into that role it's crazy I yeah mean, how did that come to be it's it's um i i it was you know i <sighs> It, it was a bit of kind of like a who, you know, sort of thing. It was it just basically so Jerry Beckley, one mm -hmm. of the founding members. Of course, yeah. I, I um, I'd been friends with his son, Matthew, since we were 20 years old. Ah, that so we would we played in bands together. And um, and then it got to a point where uh, his son, Matthew, he wanted mm -hmm. to get more into the production end of music. So and Jerry would make these solo records. So. Um, he sort of gave Matt and I the opportunity to, so Matt sort of produced and engineered some drum sessions for uh, some songs on one of Jerry's mm -hmm. solo albums. And I, and he was happy with the, the results. And so I think I, I sort of proved to him that I can play in that style because his, his solo stuff is, is still pretty similar to the America stuff. Sure. Um and so it was just as time was going on, it was it was kind of one of those, uh, you know, one of these days, you know, when when Willie decides to retire, we're going to have to, uh, you know, we'll have to, you know, get you in the band. And I was, you know, I just kind of always thought, oh, yeah, that would be cool. You know, this I didn't a very know. casual thing. I mean, like, oh, for your for yeah. real. Well, and, and it took it. I mean, it was over 10 years, but gosh, yeah, I mean, it was about 10 or 12 years until finally I got the call when I was like, Hey, cause, cause uh, their original drummer, uh, Willie Lee Cox, mm -hmm. he, he was, he was almost 10 years older than them oh, wow. uh, when he joined. Yeah. They were like, That's a huge they were, difference. 
Well, yeah, it was so like they were these like young, like 20, 21 year old kids. And he was like almost 30, yeah. but he was like the experienced musician to join the band. Right. Um, and yeah, when he, he just decided he wanted to retire, he was, I think he was getting close to 70, wanted to retire. And, um, and that's, and that's when I got the call. And, and of course, like most things, it was, Hey, we need you like tomorrow sort of thing. It's yeah. never oh, like, okay. Oh, how about, yeah, next yeah. week. No, now. Nah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I was, I was in between. Um, so I was, it was the summer, it was summer 2014. Mm -hmm. And I was finishing up a U.S. tour with Real Big Fish. And we had like four days off. And then we were going to go to Europe for like another six weeks oh, no. with Real Big Fish. But it just so happened that like Jerry called, we had like two days left. Mm -hmm. on our u.s tour and and i was just thinking like i'm i don't want to miss out on this opportunity like i love playing with real big fish i love those guys but it had been 10 years at that point and i was and i was ready to just to to do something new and do something sure. different um and so i was i was fortunate enough to find a, a friend of mine his name's ed beach and he's still the drummer with the band but at first it was more of a, Hey, do you think you could learn, you know, 25 real big fish songs and, you know, right. A week. And luckily he, he used to play in another ska band, um, that would, oh, that we had taken on real big fish had taken on tour. Mm -hmm. So he had heard real big fish's music for years at this oh, okay. point. So he, he, he kind of already had a leg up. So, but luckily I, I was able to convince him, I feel sort of bad, but <laughs> it, it ended up working. It, it worked out fine because I, I, it's, it's sort of like everyone moved up. So it was like, mm -hmm. I got to move up to America. This, this guy, Ed beach, he kind of moved up to real big fish. And then there was another younger guy who kind of moved up into this band that he was playing in. So, cause he was really stressed about, you know, he goes like, well, I just don't want to leave my guys. And I was like, I was like, trust me, man, you're going to want to do this. Like, come on. It, it, yeah. There was a bit of like, you know, Hesitancy. <clears throat> like, do I really want to start something new? I'm comfortable here. I don't want to, I don't want to yeah. get out of this comfort zone. So I was, I was lucky enough that he agreed to it. Um, but it, cause I was, I really was stressed cause I knew I didn't want to, I didn't want to miss out on the opportunity, right, but I course. knew I could, I knew I couldn't also just like up and you leave. know, up and leave and be like, well, we have a tour like in a week. Well, that's your problem. You figure it out. Like I was like, oh, I can't do that. Right. So I was, I was really happy that I was able to find somebody, um, but yeah, it was it was really kind of weird because it wasn't like something that was building up mm -hmm. to me leaving the band. It was it was it was one day I was in the band, and then literally the next day I was like, I had a conversation with the lead singer Aaron Barrett, and I was like, "Hey man, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, he's like, you know, yeah, what's up? I'm like, so I'm gonna leave the band. Amazing. Yeah, and he's like, "What? I was you like, you didn't even say, "Hey, America's offered me." You just said, "I'm leaving the band." Long pause. <laughs> But well, uh, I did. Yeah. Well, I told. I mean, I eventually told him. But yeah. But, Ryan Seacrest on him. You played him. Yeah, I probably should have. I, you know, thinking back, I probably should have said, "Hey, I got a phone call from the band America. I'd really like to take this much job. better no, delivery." It's, instead, I just said, ah, "I'm gonna leave. The, I'm leaving the band." And he's just like, "What?" what? <laughs> like, um. But then you know, I kind of. You know, and he was, you know, he was, of course, you know, he was sad about it, you know, because we, you know, we were really good friends and, sure. and you know, still are good friends. Um, but he, you know, he understood and, and yeah. uh, he wasn't, he wasn't, uh, you know, there, because you never know what that sort of scenario is going right, to bring, what sort of reaction. So I was, I, I, I felt, I was glad that I was able to sort of exit that band mm -hmm. sort of like on good terms. And I've actually gone, um, back and filled in a few times throughout the last five years when like Ed couldn't make a few shows. So that's it's, awesome. Yeah. It's, it's good that it, it worked out the way it did. Mm -hmm. Now you're going from a ska type of drumming style to more classic rock. Um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even call them straight classic rock, but more, there's a lot of surf rock kind of vibes in, in some of the songs too, but you're going from a ska, a ska drumming style to something completely different. What was the hardest part as far as adjusting? I know obviously you grew up listening to those records. So you had that right. some of that stuff drilled already in the back of your head. But what's the biggest switch and change from a ska 
type of drumming style to more of a classic drumming it, style? Was it a it, big adjustment and like this? It yeah, it was a. Uh... It was it was definitely like I it was like the the hardest part was like learning how to play softer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because for for about ten years it was I was bas- I was playing in a band where it was basically play as loud and as fast as you can. Okay. And wow. then this was just sort of like you know I always I always kind of just lay yeah low. it's it's like it's like it's like wine by the fire type music mm-hmm. and um I uh. And so that was that was kind of difficult, like fi- like learning how, like because there were two things were happening. One, I was I was adjusting to them, but they were also adjusting to me because they sure. they had gotten used to the same drummer for forty four years. Yeah, after a um, while, it gets a little weird switching to someone else. Yeah, so there were, but you know, they were, but everybody was great and really um, uh, uh, supportive and really, you know, they they you know, there was no, like, no one was ever yelling at me or giving me dirty looks or anything. Sure. Cause they knew there was, a, there was going to be that adjustment period, mm-hmm. but it, it, you know, it took, uh, I think, I think they were happy with what I was doing. Uh, thankfully mm-hmm. um, pretty early on, but it, me personally though, it took me a good, I want to say it took me almost a good year before wow. I really felt comfortable. Like I could just sort of like, sit back and just play and and not and not have to think about what i was mm-hmm. doing um like there was definitely a you know and again i i don't think again i think it was all mainly just in my own head but i, sure. I got so used to playing with real big fish where everything is just so it, you don't even you know it's just all muscle memory you don't even mm-hmm. have to think you can just get you just get to perform right um whereas all of a sudden i was you know thinking oh wait did i Oh wait, did I miss a chorus? Did I miss a beat? Well, mm-hmm. what, you know, so there was definitely some growing pains, but once, but I'm so glad that, you know, I stuck with it. Not that I ever had any plans on like leaving them or anything, Sure. but it was, it was definitely, it's, it was a, it was a trip. I think it's like when someone starts a new job, cause I've had friends start new jobs where, and even though they're, it's like you're technically doing the same job, but you know mm. it's for a different company or it's slightly different. It's like a honeymoon um, period where you're like, it, yeah, it's different. I don't know how to explain. Yeah, it. so I mean, but like, imagine you know, like I guess if someone was working in marketing and sure. they worked at like a video game company doing marketing, then all of a sudden they went to a book comp, you know, a book publisher doing marketing. It's like mm-hmm. you're still doing marketing, but it's totally different things. Totally so, different, yeah. and there was there was like a bit of a it was, it was weird. Cause for as many years as I had spent practicing the drums and I'm still practicing to this sure, day, but yeah, of course. Uh, it was almost like that. Do I suck? This, right. I, I feel like I'm playing awful here. Like I don't even deserve to be in this band. And it, but it's only because I think my, you know, I think any, anyone who's, who wants to be, you know, an achiever, they're sure. always going to have this set this very high standard for themselves. Um, and uh, I, and I, I'm just glad that, you know, that again, that they were happy with the way I was performing because it allowed, it, it allowed me, it gave me, they gave me the space and the time to sort of, for, for me to feel comfortable, yeah. um, playing in that setting. Cause the, I mean, which is by the way, the most laid back, no drama, no stress, like They're great environment. Shows. I've seen you guys five yeah. times with you and I, cause I work at the Arcata theater in St. Charles. So right, um, you guys come every year two nights sold out um oh man i really meant that you know it was it it because it's always seems to be right around either just before yeah yeah it's either it's either always just before or just after thanksgiving Mm -hmm. and and it was around that time this year that it it's weird for all the shows that we played i was actually thinking i was like man i kind of miss like not being in the arcada right now like not like you know it's and it's it's funny because some because it could get pretty cold, but I'm like I kind of well, yeah, miss- they changed. They got much better. We got like twelve bathrooms now. We got heaters. What? We got yes, I know, right? So it's like we got three restaurants in there now. We got a hotel in there. Um, yeah, nice. it's insane. I can, they, well, I can't wait like to see it. City. They got that whole block. 
now. Wow. So it's like they have like Prince themed rooms, Kiss themed hotel rooms. They have all these different themes. He's a nuts. My my boss is nuts. He's been <laughs> working like a madman. Yeah, there's there's three restaurants in there and two bars. So five wow. concepts. It's insane. But but like there was that moment I was thinking, you know, I kind of wish like I kind I'm kind of missing like freezing my butt off in the down in that downstairs, right. you know, cold, backstage yeah. area, you know, but but like it's just you know, because it's and I and I look forward to seeing it again soon. But like, because you know, it's it's just like a funky old theater. Yeah. But like, it was always it's always so fun playing there. Yeah, the place um, it was falling apart, but uh, yeah, the renovations are good. But yeah, no, that's what it, that was one of the things. Like every time you guys would come, it's just it never a disappointment. And the thing is, for you, you're going from what was the biggest adjustment as far as. Um, more of acceptance with with fan with the fan base that America has garnered over the years who are you know they're very you know they've developed a a likeness and um you know kind of you here you are coming into a band who's made a name for himself for a very long time did you feel at first um a little bit of a barrier between you and the fans or did you feel acceptance immediately from them because they can be harsh sometimes i mean yeah. you're going from more chill like you know just no fucks given type of <laughs> type of audience like just super chill just super peaceful type of audience to something a little bit more different what was mm-hmm. the hardest part about adapting to this new well family per se well, first of all, um, I was just, I was totally, it seemed like I was totally welcome. There, there seemed to be no, uh, you know, pushback at all. There, there seemed to be, you know, no, no, like, you know, where's, where's Willie? We want Willie back. Right. Um, and, uh, but I will say though, go playing in a band like real big fish where the crowds, you know, it's young kids and the, mo- you know, there's a mosh pit, there's, sure. you know, there's, there's crowd surfers. So the one, one of the things that was really freaky Don't at first, at America. <laughs> no, and it's just everyone's sitting there and I'm totally used to it now, right, but course. the first like show or two in my head, I'm thinking, Oh my God, I suck so bad that they hate what, you know, they, they, I'm yeah, making no the whole band. The f- yeah. No, no one's like getting rowdy. It's just like, so that was, that was really, and and I think what happened was because I was so self-conscious of the fact that the room would just be quiet and people sure. would be, you know, watching the show that I realized, oh, they're actually watching. They're like really listening, yeah, really they're, they're watching. Focusing, yeah. And so I think that kind of scared me. So <laughs> I, I felt like I would either be playing too loud or too soft. Right. Like I could never. And eventually, though, I did. I did get a lot more comfortable with it. And because I think there was that moment where I was like, I feel like. I was like, I think I'd be like, I feel like kind of a, like a, a doofus, like rocking out playing. And these people are just sitting in their seats watching, but it's just like, but eventually I was like, it just kind of became the thing of like, you just got to play your show. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but I noticed the more, I felt like the more, and, and maybe it's all in my head, but I felt like the more I started to relax during the shows, I felt like I started seeing like the crowd relax more. That could be all in my head. I don't How know. So, what what was it that that made you? I mean, because that's kind of a that's kind of a a, a big thing to to pinpoint. How, how so do you think? Well, I th- you know it for I because think because nothing's there's... actually changed. It was just like yeah. a mental thing where you're like, okay, I think now's the time. What yeah, I. I, th- I think it was just, well, I mean, it wasn't just totally for me. I think, you know, a lot of it would be Jerry and Dewey saying like, you're doing great. Just sure. relax and just play. Enjoy it. Like you're not, it's like, you don't, you know, suck. They, well, they'd be, yeah, they kind of would be like that. You're in this band for a reason. Right. We like what you're doing. Like, so just keep doing, it's like, if we don't like what, you, what, what if you're doing we'll something, you. we'll tell you. So, um, and I think that helped. Uh, and then, um, I, th- I think also um, let allowing myself to really sort of look at the audience. Cause there was a while where I just wouldn't even, I, I would just kind of like, I'm pretty really? much blind without my glasses. So I oh, would almost shoot. just take my glasses off. And so I couldn't really see anything. You're and that sticks. 
Yeah. So that would sort of help me at first. So to, to sort of relax. And then eventually I put the glasses back on and, you know, and seeing people and like, Oh, they re- really look like they're having fun and, yeah. and really kind of keen trying to key in on people that I think it really helped me to, uh, again, to, to just sort of mellow out and, sure. um, and just enjoy what was happening. Sure. I can relate to that to some extent, kind of. I'm not a drummer by any means, but I know what you mean about the whole glasses and glasses on type thing where I'll be because I have ADHD to the max and I have focusing issues where if I'm meeting someone for the first time, like my like the girlfriend that I was with, like the first time I met her, I hung out with her. I, I couldn't take that medicine because that medicine like locks me up. And if I don't take oh. it, I'm energetic and I'm like super, I'm a different person. <laughs> but as soon as I make that first interaction, I'm like, okay, now I can, now I yeah. can, it's, it's a weird thing. It's like, it's almost like, I don't know what it is. It's like a completely different person. It's a completely different being. And once you yeah. feel comfortable enough with that being, or in your case, that new family of, of fans, Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, I, I could be myself. It, it's a weird, it is a weird time period. But once you figure it out, it's like, God, I was all that for nothing. Like this was not bad yeah. at all. I've wasted <laughs> it's a, all this time. Yeah. It's amazing how much, how long it can take us to like really be, to be okay with ourselves. Sure. Yeah. Like it's, it's amazing how long it can take, you know, and some people and everyone f- kind of figures it out at different times in their mm-hmm. life. Um, and I, I feel like I finally was have been getting to that point where I've uh where where I'm just I'm I'm comfortable in my own skin, you know. You like I don't necessarily like but even things like playing drums now, it's like I, I don't necessarily listen to my drumming and go and think I'm an amazing drummer, but yeah. I can at least listen back to my playing and go, oh, that's good. Yeah. That's I can, great. That's, I'm yeah, proud of I could, like, I could, and that's I could, okay. That's not, being, yeah. that's not like narcissist. I mean, that that's normal, you know? I, and I think I just stopped, you know, well, I stopped either one comparing myself to, to other musicians yeah, or great. drummers and, um, and, and, you know, and just realized, yeah, like we're all on our own journey sure. and just, yeah. and it's like, as far as like me as a musician, it's like, well, this is where you're at just as a mm-hmm. human, you know, not even as a musician, just like right. as a human being, this is where you're at on, you know, not even in life, just on this day at this time. And, and you can either embrace it and then enjoy it, or you can do what I did. I've done most of my life, which and is just stress about it again. and think about, okay, how can I change this? Right. You know? No, that's great. You know, something else uh, that's really cool is uh, your new music. I, I can't say the album name. You're going to have to help me here. Yeah, I have this I have this uh, uh, habit. Is it X Toro? Is that it? No, it's just, well, it's, it's, so it's, it's just XO, it's X O T O R O, but it's, I, I pronounce it Zotoro. Yeah, it's totally a lot screwed up. Okay. Yeah. No, it's okay. It's, it's, I, it, I should have named, I, I think in my head I was thinking, oh, well, I'll I'll give it like a really unique name. So if for whatever reason, someone wanted to Google it sometime, maybe that would be what came up, you know, but, it, but in the process though, yeah, you, you end up creating this, this, this album that n- no one can even, <laughs> no one can even say. Right. And I, I found it kind of cool actually, cause I, I actually bought the album right when, uh, I think you you started to only sell it at the America shows. Like, yeah, you, you didn't release it for a while. Um, I I don't know when you actually released it on the streaming platforms, but uh, I bought a copy of it and I listened to it when you had it at the the theater, and I absolutely loved it. It had all different types of stuff. It's like, yeah, I, I, I felt power pop, uh, pop rock, alt rock. Like, there's a whole bunch of different influences on there. Um, and what was kind of a big part of shaping that sound? I mean, obviously you're, you're, you're coming from two different bands, uh, you're playing with two different bands and then you developed your own sound, your own music outside of that. What kind of helped inspire the sound of of that album? Because it's, it's, it's very different than the work that you do in America and both real big fish. I mean, what kind of, uh, brought that sound together? Cause it's completely different. It's really a great album. Thank you. Uh, I think it was just, it, it's just a, all, all the things that I'd been listening to my whole life that just mm. sort of, that, that sort of ends up kind of becoming this thing of like, 
cultivating it to something big and special. Yeah. Or, or just like this, it's almost like, I, I think most band, most artists or most bands, it's the, the records they end up making. I would always think it's, it's kind of ends up being a thing of, well, this is the record I always wanted to hear. Right. And I think that's kind of, that's that how I, I think that's kind of how I came oh, up wow. with the sound. It was really just like, well, this would be a record I would want to hear. Um, but, but, you know, but as far as like bands and artists that have in, I mean, there's countless, there's countless right. you know, but, but some bit, you know, like probably, you know, cause I was 12 years old um, or I was 11 years old when uh, the Nirvana album, Nevermind came out. Oh, wow. So it was just like, and that really kind of like, so, so my whole like kind of upbringing, the first 11 years of my life was all like kind of classic rock mm -hmm. blues albums. And then I heard Nirvana and it was just like, what is this? Yeah. So that sort of put me down the path of rock, but, but, but even though, but like, so, you know, I'm the sort of person that like loves listening to Nirvana, but like, I also really love, you know, you too. Um, and I'm not ashamed to say I really love Coldplay. <laughs> oh, I love Coldplay. I don't know why they get so much flag. I they never get understood. so much. Like, yeah. My dad's one of them. I I go Coldplay. Oh, sure. You. Lo I'm like, what? Like, what's this? What is? Yeah. The, what is? What have they done to? I I don't know how they get that that stigma. Same with a uh, a band like Nickelback. Oh, yeah. I, I I mean I don't understand how you do what it is about the bands like that. I don't get it. Yeah. But I'm, and I'm also a big fan uh, of Jimmy Eat World. So oh, like, sure. yeah. so, so bands like that, it kind of, that kind of shaped my, or, you know, really when you put them all together, I felt like that's kind of, there's a lot of different elements from those bands that I guess sort of, I thought if I put them together, it would, it would sort of be hopefully my own sound. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't pretend to think that anything I'm doing is revolutionary. I mean, it's, it's just, but it's just like a rock record, you know, yeah. like, so, uh, but again, I think to go take, bring it back to the studio. I think the fact that I've made these records is because I just had access to a studio with great gear and great sure, equipment. And, um, cause I, cause I do ask myself sometimes like, would I still keep making records if, if, if I didn't really have access to like a, to a studio and I guess I don't really have to figure that out now because I still have access to a studio. Right. So I guess one day, if for whatever reason we close down the you'll studio, figure that out. Maybe you'll we'll, sell licenses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll. Well, but you know, at the but but I do I think, but you know, because at the end of the day, I I've been making these records because I just enjoy it. Right. Um, but I I really do think of myself as a drummer first, mm -hmm. as you know. A, a touring drummer if if i could be in a band one, again one day that'd be cool but i had, i i just enjoy being like i mean and and i hesitate even saying like using the term being a just a hired guy mm -hmm. in a band because you know jerry and dewey in america have you know treated you know treat us they it's the closest thing to being in a band without actually being a band member i guess um is playing with those guys it's an interesting way to say it yeah, they're so cool. Like, and they treat us so well. Um, but if, if I could keep having experiences like playing in America, yeah, I, I would. I just love playing drums, and I love playing music. I love all kinds of music, mm -hmm. and I think that's, I think that's what uh, you know. Moving forward will help me to hopefully have a continue to have a a, a good career as a drummer. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I I feel like I've seen drummers or just musicians in general who get these side gigs, sideman gigs, and um, they're not really into the music. And you can see it when they're on stage. Yeah, they're just no playing their parts. They're just playing the chords. They're playing it. Yeah, it sounds like it's but but they're just, they're not really in it. Yeah, and it's and 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 also, but I've seen other. You know, I feel like I've seen other groups or other artists who get a backup band and um, and even though they're rocking out, it's like there just seems to be this feeling of like they're not into it. Right. I mean, it's just it's just an act. They're 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 excited to get a paycheck, I'm sure. sure but, yeah, yeah. That um, but yeah, I think um that's i think for me that's the mo that's one of the most important things. Obviously, we all need to make a living. Right. Of um, course. But, you know, it is really important for me to be able to, you know, because I, I wouldn't have, I, I don't think I would have taken the America gig if I wasn't able to say to myself, yeah, I, the, the music is amazing, obviously. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, and I enjoy, but also enjoy hanging out with those, uh, with, with everyone in the organization. Um, so I feel, I feel luck, very lucky that I've been able to play in two bands where mm -hmm. I love the people and I love the music so much. Right. Of course. Out of all the gigs you've played with, uh, with actually both bands, what has been the venue that has absolutely, you've been obsessed with? Like what's one venue that you guys have played at that you got, that you've been like, wow, this is great. I get to do this. We, so last, uh, Last year, we did a tour of Italy with America, oh, and wow. um, we were playing all these old uh, uh, Roman amphitheaters, mm -hmm. you know, just like it just just that's crazy as hell. Just yeah, just amazing looking in the and that my sound great. I, you know, it's like I it's I wish I, I don't. That's another weird thing about being in a band is because it's like. I, especially as a drummer, you're so, back yeah, there you're, behind the you're, you're So you're back. like, I hope it, yeah, yeah. you're like, I hope it How's sounds it good sound out there. there? Good. Yeah. <laughs> but I think one of my favorite ones was we played uh, an amphitheater, an outdoor, just thousands of years old amphitheater in uh, in Verona, you know, oh, wow. and um, where, you know, where Romeo and Juliet is supposed to oh, take geez, place. Yeah. And just playing, I mean, all of them, all the shows were amazing, but playing that one was just so cool. Um, the crowd was amazing. You know, it, it just rained all day long and we thought we were going to have to cancel the show and it, but it's like, it stopped raining just in time for we everything had a roof to sort over, of dry. Right or no? We did, yeah. but still it was just torrential oh, rain. Wind, like it's, so it's, it's just, just yeah. yeah, but it, it was just a great show and it was just a great venue and, and great people. But, um, but you know, that's another thing too. It's like things like that are always hard to those memories or when, if, you know, ask that question. I mean, that one does stick out, mm -hmm. but there's just so many to even, there, well, there, there's, there are so many, but the, it's just, again, it's like, I get, it, it's, I, I love playing music so much that I it don't can even be, think about it. I don't even think about it. I mean, and especially if, if it's a good crowd, mm -hmm. it, it can really be anywhere. And, and, and really a good crowd. And not, that doesn't even necessarily mean size wise. It just right. means a, a crowd who's really into it. Mm -hmm. um, Cause that can, you know, I, I, I think, you know, a really good crowd can make you forget about, you know, if you're having a bad day or sure, if there yeah, were, yeah. or if there were technical difficulties all day and you're trying to get things worked out mm -hmm. um, uh, or, you know, maybe the, maybe just the whole situation of playing isn't quite optimal that day, right. but like, if you just have this great crowd, it can kind of make you forget about all that and just enjoy, uh, just playing. Sure. Um, at least for me, I, 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 I can't speak for everybody, you know, who plays music, but right. I know, I know for me that, yeah, a, a good, a good energetic crowd and energetic doesn't even necessarily mean that they're up off their seats getting crazy. Like there, there really is like, you can tell if they're locked in or they're not. Or they're yeah. Not feeling it. There's, the there's worst. A, it's like, what am I, am I doing something wrong or is he, right. it's like, what's going on here? One thing I do have to say, one thing that has made me laugh and it, it it's, I think I want to say it's happened specifically two times where there'll be a show where I'm like, halfway through the show i'm like man i really feel like i'm having a good show like this feels good tonight yeah. and then i'll look out in the audience to see someone like in the front row going like this and you're like okay maybe he had a long day uh, i don't know yeah. what's going on it's, it's a friday okay i get the <laughs> or or and so and you know it's like the america audience sometimes you know the the, the, the audience is is a little, uh, bit older. little bit older but there was one time where again i was like man, I really feel like we're rocking out. And, tonight. We're such, and there's out. someone in, there's someone in the front row, just like, and then you go from this to going <laughs> like guys, just full on ugh, just asleep. I it was just, just I, one person. I wasn't like, a it crowd. was just one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Somehow yeah. everyone in the crowd was asleep. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, Hey man, I appreciate you doing this. Absolutely. Well, thanks for hitting me up. You got it.